Welcome to the birthing ritual. We are here today with Catherine and Samuel. And Samuel is, how old Catherine? About eight weeks old. So we're going to be doing a ritual that will bring light into all the cells of Samuel's body. <laughs> and remind him that he's light and also help him to feel the light in his body. So we begin by bringing light into our bodies first. And so Catherine and I are going to be drawing light from the top of our heads down through the bottoms of our feet. And then we're going to be saying some words of ritual to Samuel to actually invite his light and his soul to come fully into his physical body so that he can live his life in a, in a very unified way between his heart, his soul, his mind, his body, and his spirit. So the way that we start is by relaxing and breathing. So we're going to do that. Catherine and I are going to do that. Just breathing. You can do this too, Samuel. Just breathing. Yeah. And we bring the light in the top of our head and all the way through all the cells of the body so that it goes deep into the circuits of the body and then down into the feet. And the feet then have roots that go down deep into the earth. So we're just going to take a minute to do that practice. You feel ready? Okay. So the next thing that you would do after you bring the light in the top of your head and all the way through your body is then you would connect with the seat of light that's in your body and then connect, connect with the seat of light in your child's body. So the first thing that we do with the seat of light is we imagine that there's a point of light right here. This place is called the xiphoid process and it's at the base of the sternum. There's a, a very pointy piece of cartilage there and that actually points to the seed of light. That's S-E-E-D, seed of light. And you can place your hands there, and you can just begin to breathe in and out. The seed of light is where the understanding and experience of oneness resides in the body. It's an etheric point, and it's where we have the vision of what it would be like if all of us work together and live together in harmony and peace. And this is inside each and every one of us. And when we stimulate the seed of light, we begin to feel how connected we are with all things, and we feel that interconnectedness. So before we work with the child or work with others, we want to tap into that seed of light, feel the oneness, and then begin that process of connection consciously. All right. Feels like we're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. The next thing is then to actually bring the light through Samuel's body, out the bottom of his feet. I'm going to actually put my hands here okay. and direct some light into the top of his head, and then we're going to send that through. And then you can just pull it out the bottoms okay. of his feet. Okay, we can just do this together. And then when you feel, actually, that the whole current of light is all the way through his body, then you can just let me know. Okay. And then you can say, we'll start the prayer. Because okay. I feel it in the bottoms of his feet. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So then the mother would say the prayer to the child. Now this prayer is is about bringing the body and the soul and the light and the spirit together, but it's also about promises that the mother makes to the child that will help to set a a field or a foundation of love in the heart of the child and in the cells of the child. So the child knows what love is and the child understands how love works. That it's not conditional and it's not based on behavior. It's a, a God-given right that's brought in the form of the mother into connection with um, the experience that happens through birthing and through raising a child. Okay, so here's where the lines are here. Okay. Yeah. You have chosen to come into form. You have chosen to come into form. You have chosen to come into form. I anchor you to Mother Earth. I anchor you to Mother Earth. Yes. I anchor you 
to Mother Earth. You have chosen this form. You are light. You are light. You are light. You are light and light you shall remain. You are light and light you shall remain. You are light and light you shall remain. That's right. There you go. I can just let him absorb that for a minute. Yeah. So when Catherine was moving that light and energy through the body and then talking to Samuel about her promise to him, every time she said the sentence, you are light and light you shall remain, and she said each of those sentences three times, it helps to set the energy into the body. It helps the cells to begin to respond to um, the sound of her voice, the experience of the energy exchange, and the true union that they already have since they've chosen to be together in this lifetime. So it's very important to say these prayers slowly, to say them three times, to acknowledge that each of the aspects has a different function so that when we're opening up we're drawing light through our body and then we're drawing light through the body of the child and then we're experiencing heart-to-heart -heart connection. So now that we've actually drawn the light from the top of Samuel's head all the way through his body and, and out the bottoms of his feet, he's basically in his body, you know, he's there. So now what we're going to do is make a connection between Samuel and his mom. And the easiest way to do that is for her to put her hand here, one hand here, and then one hand on your heart, okay? And then you read this um, next aspect right here okay. about the bond that you have okay. with him. Okay. okay. The bond that we have is through love. The bond that we have is through love. What I teach you, I teach from love. What is not your truth, I give you permission to release. What is not your truth, I give you permission to release. I acknowledge your divinity and your spirit. You have arrived on planet Earth. <laughs> you have arrived on planet Earth. That's right. And you are part <laughs> of our family. <laughs> know that you are creative and can achieve anything that you desire. Know that you are creative and you can achieve anything that you desire. There are no conditions on my love. I will love you no matter what. Without question. Good. So the importance of, of that particular part of the prayer is that a child truly understands from the time it's born that it has a right to be here and that its relationship with its mother is not based on right or wrong, it's not based on the conditions and beliefs of society, it's much more based on the experience that you have together creating that weave, mm -hmm. that weave. So we'll do the weave next. Okay. Okay. So it's recommended, of course, uh, that as soon as the child is born, and the cleaning up has been accomplished that the light be brought through and then when the mother feels ready to make the promise to the child. And another way that that connection is formed is through what we call the weaving. Mm -hmm. So the way that you might want to do that now just to practice that is that you put your heart and Samuel's heart together. Mm -hmm. And the objective is that you're going to weave mm -hmm. the beating of your heart mm -hmm. into the beating of his heart. Mm -hmm and then he's going to weave back to you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, kind of a figure eight. Mm -hmm. It's like a golden, two, two golden circles coming together. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, no matter where you are, he'll always feel this foundational, heart-centered connection to you. Mm -hmm. And then 
because you're connected mm -hmm. through your seat of light to your potential. Mm -hmm. He's connected to his seat of light and to his potential. What we have here is we have a larger and larger grid work all the time. So mm -hmm. basically that level of field or interconnection mm -hmm. starts to expand. And mm -hmm. the beauty of that is that when anyone's in this environment with you, they'll start to feel it as well. So mm -hmm. you can do it with your husband. Mm -hmm. You can do it with people who come into the experience with your parents and his mm -hmm. parents. Because then the child's environment begins to reflect mm -hmm. the same feeling he has with you. Uh -huh. So it's not just, oh, I have this with mom. It's, oh, this is the way the world can be. This is the way we can create the world. So Catherine, why don't we now uh, weave the, the hearts together. We use the figure eight, the idea of the golden thread between Samuel's heart and your heart, go back and forth, and we'll weave that in, okay? so. Samuel, I'm gonna pick you up. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. Okay, sweetie. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there it went, there it went. Yeah, there it went. So that when you think about him, for example, if he wakes up in the middle of the night and you'd like you know, him to sleep or whatever, um, you can send the heart weave like right across the house or right you know if you're not together you can send it you can send it across to him wherever he is so you've got this non-local connection now there's another aspect of the prayer now Catherine you can say that starts right here okay and you can again put your hand on his heart you are light and I honor you you have come to this place to live with me. You've come to this place to live with me, and I do not own you. <laughs> you have an exclamation about that. You come from me, and I do not own you. You are a child of light, a child of the universe. I know that you have wisdom and truth within you. I know you have wisdom and truth within you. And I honor that wisdom and truth. I honor that wisdom and truth. I give you permission to live your truth. I ask that you respect my truth. I ask that you respect my truth. But I will not ask you to live my truth. Your ability to know is deep and profound, and I respect and honor it. I will guide you, but I will not expect you to live my life or my ways. I will always encourage and support your creativity and the fulfillment of your potential. In every way, I will be open to the experience we have. Always loving you from my soul. Always understanding that our love will continue always through all time. Mm. There is nothing you have to do to win my love. You don't have to do anything to win my love. That's right. There is no condition or situation upon which I will remove my love from you. I will love you forever. <laughs> and that is promised to you in this moment. Yeah. So when the mother 
supports the soul of the child. The mother gives permission for the child to live from the seed of light. And that really means that the child can then live its full potential. And it doesn't have to acquiesce to the conditioning of the world. It can just begin to, from that very early age, say, OK, mm -hmm. this is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Begin to get in touch with the body, first of all, and with the soul and with the consciousness. But in a very direct way, the mother is giving permission from a very young age, saying, you go for it. You do what you need to do, because all I'm here for is to guide you. I'm here to support you, and I'm here to foster this, but I'm not here to be in charge of it. So there's no internal conflict in the child then. There's the sense of rightness and order that comes from a very deep place inside. And it's very hard to overturn it from, from the outer framework. So if the child is encouraged in this way from a very early age, then when the child goes out into the world, it learns to respect other individuals' passage, other individuals' potential, ways in which the interaction can then um, be supported from the seed of light of the child and then another seed of light and another one. So then we have this magnification of the connection that's true and real and deep and doesn't have any um, outer, I guess I want to say conditioning again, because the conditioning is so strong, you know, in each of us. So anyway, you know, Samuel then has the ability from his own core to know when he's aligned. He knows when the light is moving through him, and he begins to have more of an understanding of who he is, not only in the world, but in the universe. Mm. And then when he goes into the world, he's, it's easier for him to live his truth because he doesn't have to conform. And then the other thing, of course, is that he'll know if you're tired, mm -hmm. if you're not feeling well, if mm -hmm. you're angry, if you're frustrated, if you're irritable. Um, he will know that that's on top of the bond of love that you have. Mm. It isn't about the bond of love that you have. Mm. So that's why it's important every day to just, when you're holding him, just say, you are light and light you shall remain. Oh. We've got this connection. We're going to mm -hmm. create a family mm -hmm. and a base and an environment and a neighborhood and a community and a world where this becomes the underlying framework of our interactions. And what happens then is he feels safe here. I see. Because he's helping to build and create this framework. Mm. The other thing that's really important is to tell him about what's going to happen during the day in pictures. Um, and we actually did this before um, we filmed this today. We told Samuel exactly what would happen in pictures so that he could see that there were three people going to be coming and that they were going to be having lights around and they were going to be doing this filming. And so he was prepared for it. And so if you're going to mm -hmm. go on a, a two-hour trip, mm -hmm. you give him a picture. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he begins to understand, oh, this, mm -hmm. is, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's able to have some input into how he responds then. Mm -hmm. um, and you can show him that, you know, in, a, in an hour we're going to stop and, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to, like mm -hmm. when he's two years old, you know, we're going to stop and you're going to get to walk around mm -hmm. or you're going to get to bring your toys or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you have that, that um, okay. communication with him. And then the other thing I wanted to bring up with this, was this idea of respect. Mm -hmm. Because what you're, you're actually teaching him is that you are respecting him, his purpose for being here, and his total consciousness, his package. You, you're mm -hmm. respecting that. Okay? <laughs> by respecting that and by promising him that you will honor whatever happens within his heart, he then in turn learns to respect your heart, mm. just because he understands how it works. Mm. And so then you take him to Antilles. Mm -hmm. You give him a picture about Antilles. You know, Antilles doesn't like her things moved or touched. You know, Antilles very afraid. And he gets to see Antilles before he meets her. He gets to see the environment through your eyes. He gets to understand that he's going to play on the floor with his own toys, that he's not supposed to touch those things. But there's communication, mm -hmm. and then he feels like a part of what happens. Mm -hmm. And it really sets the dynamics up in a way that there's a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. He belongs. Thank you for joining us for this birthing ritual. We are hoping that all children in the world will be born in light. 
and that their mothers will remember that they are light and honor their purpose and their potential. You can do the birthing prayer for your child no matter how old your child is. In fact, you can do it for yourself. And you do not need anyone else to do it for you. You can do it with your child by yourself. Please, if you are interested in more information or in more instruction, contact us at Soul Support Systems. And our phone number is 1-800-542-SOUL, which is 7685.